Hello, I am Dr. Garima Srivastav, obstetrician and gynecologist. And today we have a very special episode in our podcast where we'll be diving into the details of obstetrician and gynecological residency program with Dr. Shonali Chandra. Dr. Shonali Chandra, will you be so kind enough to tell more about yourself and this program? So, um, I'm Dr. Shonali Chandra and I uh, did my MBBS from LLRM Medical College, uh, Meerut. And then I did my um, residency post-graduation from uh, Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi. And that is where I also did my senior residency. So over the years now, I've been involved in teaching undergraduate as well as postgraduate students, uh, aspiring, uh, you know, postgraduate students as well at the same time. And now uh, with Prep Ladder, we have come up with this OBS Gyne PG residency course. So this oh. is basically catering to those who've already made the decision that, that yeah. now they're going to be obstetricians and gynecologists. And um, they can find, uh, you know, more advanced reading resources here than what they've had in the past. So what inspired you to create this OPS and Gyne residency program and what are its core objectives? What inspired me? So um, actually, first of all, teaching inspires me. I would say, you know, teaching is my idea of uh, learning, actually, and I've always been that way. And over the years, my training has also inculcated in me a very academic sort of a mm -hmm. learning uh, behavior. So um, I've always into teaching and was doing it, had a YouTube channel also, Medicine okay. Decoded and, you know, was working on it, was posting academic content there. And I did get a feedback from a lot of my students, you know, the, who had studied with me uh, during their uh, neat PG preparation. And then later on, they would say that we would like uh, something for uh, residency as well, uh, especially DNB students as well. So maybe I believe that uh, the uh, inspiration uh, came from there where I felt that, OK, let's you know do something a little bit more. However, uh, you know, juggling with that thought on my own was a huge task because there is no limit to what you can or cannot read, yeah. should, should sure. not read read in residency so with prep ladder uh, that impetus to go forward with doing something new came so we started so wonderful and can you walk us through the program structure and what are its core objectives yeah so um with this uh, we have created uh, 200 plus hours of video lectures oh. yes so um the core structure is um I've started from the very basics, actually. Like, for instance, you'll have foundation uh, topics of Orbs Uh It is an app-based format, so you'll find the lectures there all divided or clear-cut, you know, demarcated for you people so that it is easy to grasp. So foundation lectures are there, which obviously we've gone through those uh, in our undergraduate years also, but now they will be more sort of clinical oriented and give you the relevant aspects, what you need to take forward and will also be slightly in depth as well. For instance, your OBS gyne lectures will be, big groups are subdivided basically. Like for instance, you'll have high, high risk obstetrics in one place, labor room, obstetric emergencies. In gyne, you will have, you know, um, uh, oncology separately discussed, endocrinology, infertility separately discussed. So basically, the topics and the, uh, you know, cases that you see day in and day out in your working in the wards, uh, OPDs, um, you know, especially Especially important areas which um, are generally asked in your, uh, you know, mm. residency exams, be it your theory exams, be it your practical exams. So that approach has been taken because again, it just it is too huge a I course agree. to condense even in 200 hours. So I would like to say that that uh, of course it does not take away from the necessity of reading books at the same time, but it is uh, going to be helpful for you people. We believe that if you were to find maybe one place where you can have everything out there for you uh, to refer or to uh, you know know where to read from. What do you think, Dr. Shonali, are the biggest challenges the residents are facing these days? Biggest challenge that the residents are facing these days. Now, somehow, sometimes I feel um, older when you ask me this question <laughs> because it is like our times and then current times. So, is there a difference there and everything? So, I would say yes, it is a challenging um, branch because. Again, I mean, we've all been through it. You've it's been an through emergency it. branch. It's an emergency yeah. branch. Always an emergency. The, the biggest kick for me in this branch was it would give you the um, medical aspect as well as the surgical aspect yes. for the at the same time. And I loved obstetrics and gynecology. That was my reason for choosing the branch. So considering now mm -hmm. the people have made the decision that they want to be obstetrics and gynecologists, 
I would say that uh, we were all in our cocoons when we were undergraduate students. Sure, suddenly we sure. come out in the residency uh, years and then we realize what the real world is all about, what is practicing all about, you know. And um, this is one step. Once we're done with the residency, then the second step will come. So the challenges, of course, adjustment is the biggest challenge, I would say. True. true. To every kind of thing, you know, I mean, to a new environment, to the workload. Most of our problems or most of the challenges that we face are more systemic in nature rather than any personal. Of course, we all have our own personal issues at the same time also. We're dealing with, basically, we're dealing with life, I would. You are <laughs> at that age, you know, you have to deal with life. Yes, too. you you're dealing with that. Uh, and um, so that is the challenge that we face. And um, another point that I feel where our residency training has been probably lacking, of course, is one is the... Um, uh, of course, you know, one is the skill building that we will gain through uh, over the years, like, you know, uh, surgical exposure, learning to how to operate and whatever. And then we have the academic side of it, where mm -hmm. we learn how to make decisions, clinical decisions, right? So uh, my consultants used to tell me and I've been very lucky uh, that I've had some very wonderful teachers mm -hmm. in my uh, residency here. So they would, they would tell me that, uh, you know, uh, in obstetrics, one thing is very, very important to learn as much as it, it is to learn to do a surgery is when to intervene and when not to intervene, right? True. So that kind of decision making, if one has not cultivated that over the years of residency training, then it doesn't come all of a sudden True. also. Right. And the second aspect I feel is we've not been taught how to, um, you know, talk uh, to patients, to patients, how to yes. talk to um, our colleagues and how to um, behave. So I think that part is also significantly lacking. And uh, again, nobody teaches us. It is just that we just learn it on the job and mm. then it becomes again a tiring uh, exercise in itself right so how does this course specifically address to these challenges so the course uh, uh, specifically addresses to these challenges in the sense that um, one thing is we have designed it uh, in a manner that makes reading easier for you mm. right so um, in the sense like i can just give it by an example like um, we all we all learn from our patients don't true, we right true. so in our residency years also we would have some patient admitted in the ward and we would read along with that now whatever for example anemia patient admitted or preeclampsia patient admitted and we're reading about that so we had these huge books and then i would make the cutouts of those books and carry them or whatever my notes i would carry them to the ward and refer to them from time to time and now with this app you would have the advantage of maybe you know obviously just opening your phone wow. and looking at it anytime that you want to in the middle of the night in between calls in between duties whenever you have free time while you're sipping coffee or tea or whatever so it is the ease uh, of uh, you know looking at the content which is going to be better here other than that yes of course the course has been structured in a manner where i've taken care to give you the most condensed idea about a topic, right? Because for the for the time that I've been working on this course, I've been reading and working <laughs> as if it is my uh, <laughs> final year uh, postgrad, uh, uh, you know, exam. That's because, uh, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> again, I've, I've like relived that time reading and everything. So. Again, so the idea is that when you read through a topic, it gives you the very basics. It gives you bullet points that will help you maybe attempt a long answer mm. question. So the format is also in residency exams. It is a subjective, subjective paper, right? Yes. And then it will also give you idea at the same time about the clinical aspect. So maybe if you get a case out of that very same topic, you would know what to ask in history, what to look for in examination, what investigations to order, how to plan a treatment, right? Because ultimately at the end of the day, we all know na, ke guidelines can be scary. Really? scary they, they are scary you know i mean and different guidelines talking differently exactly and and then we are at a loss as to um what do we do so there are certain things that we are practicing routinely day in and day out and then of course you have to justify your answer so that kind of exercise you know it is more of like a question and answering exercise even in the lectures so try to condense it Again, you, I mean, doing just cases or doing just theory increases the, uh, you know, lecture content or increases yeah. the hours spent on the platform. So that has been the idea that uh, it will give you a more structured approach. However, we all have our own structure. So if something works for you, one should stick to it as well. True.
what advice would you give to the doctors considering obscani residency i think we should do this together <laughs> <laughs> what advice should we be giving them i think <laughs> when you enter the obscani residency it's a life changing thing for you so you have to be prepared beforehand you have to take care of your health physical health mental health be ready for all the emergencies that you are going to be facing plus you have to adjust to the new environment with your colleagues with your teachers professors and of course keep on learning as each day passes so it's a big thing to adjust specifically from mbbs to md it's a huge change what do you think i agree with you there totally so there is an emotional and physical uh, you know requirement for this course yes. and uh, talking from experience also you know sometimes we all feel that um, it is only us who is probably you know working that hard but True. i would over the years now i always used to feel you no know, why our consultants <laughs> have gone so mellow over the years <laughs> you know, have you noticed that i'm sure i'm sure you've noticed that now our our response to the same sort of stress is a lot different true from what they what uh, it was earlier what yes. it was earlier right so over the years also i think that happens that 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 is what your profession your branch or you know practice in something day in and day out does to us so i would like to say that it all evens out in the end Uh, yeah. for most <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is that um you know uh, so this is the this is the part that you emphasized on the mental health and the emotional health other than that academically speaking uh, of course i mean i not, i'm not unaware to the fact that uh, first year may you just doing duties and you're doing the ward work and mm. the file work i mean you're doing you're shadowing your interns also at the same time so again we've lived through that second year you'll spend in your thesis uh, some places i think the thesis needs to be submitted in the third year yeah 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 so we yeah. we however in delhi we submitted in the second year so third year for us was left completely blank in the sense that you could read as much as you would want mm. and again you have to be also cautious about the idea ke pe how things are in your own department right mm. um, so so one thing is that you should start early and because it will take time and you will have your pace so start early make your notes read try to read standard textbooks you know because that habit won't come back honestly mm. speaking so uh, go slow because initially you will not have the time but again if you leave it at that then two years will go by just like in that in the snap of an yeah. instant and that's my only suggestion is just slow and steady wins the race i think uh, this is truly applicable here <laughs> true 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 yeah Thank you Dr. Shonali for sharing these insights and for all our listeners who are interested in knowing more about the course please find the link below you can use the code obgyn for you to extend the free trial for 7 days thank you have a lovely day